All right. We are live. Live and direct. Good morning, everybody. What's going on? Good evening. Good morrow. Good, good day. All right. I think everything's up and running. Okay, we got Twitch. We got Facebook. We've got... YouTube. All right, I think we are good. What's up, everybody? Man, how was that zebra summit? Good stuff. Good stuff. Let me uh, switch my fan real quick here. Today we're picking back up um, on this fine young cannibal. What up, Mike? How you doing, man? So we're going to pick this guy back up. Um, finish up his hand is what we were working on last time. Finish that guy up, and then we'll uh, continue moving forward. I think we're going to get into some of his um, accoutrements today. That sounds good. We start bringing some of this stuff up to snuff here. Maybe work on this leg a little bit more. Good morning, good morning. All right. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. All right. Last time on Brendan Sculpts a Troll, uh, we were working on this hand. Let's see if we can actually see before and after. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nice. Actually, this was, that was before. <laughs> that was after. Let's just combine all these. Hey, I said one. Thank you. So let's just merge those down. So this is after, before. Much better. Uh, the video quality should pick up here. It's source, so. Rarty, the man, the Dan. What's up, buddy? <laughs> How you doing, man? I love that you still have your own emojis. That's beautiful. How you been, dude? Yeah, all right, let's start. Let's keep working on this hand. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm uh, humbled by the uh, the response to this guy so far. But uh, he's been um, he's been a lot of fun to work on. It's good at uh, asymmetrical and uh, and anatomy practice. Dude, you finding some finding some time to work on your own stuff too? Man, I found <laughs> I found it so important as you get more busy, like the more the more you want to work on your own stuff. <laughs> What's up, Silence? How you doing, man? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, tons. What's up, Ben? Vichar, what's up, dude? Hello from Indy, Vasu. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, we need to active... You know, I wish, you know, here's, here's one of my requests is, uh, if, if you don't have, uh, an active record on for a layer and you go to record on something, instead of it just telling you and say, do you want to turn recording on this layer? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And then it would like 
go up, turn it on, and then come back to the subdivision level that you were on. God, that would be so good. Um, how many hours have I worked on this? I'm probably about, I think, maybe 30. Oh my god, stop it. About 30 hours right now. Something like that. Um, yeah. Let's just start a new layer here. Just in case today is my horrible off day. What kind of personal stuff are you working on, Dan? Probably another face, right? I'm guessing. You know, I probably don't want to do this up at level four. I want to come back down, let's say three. Yeah, there we go. I just want to work on some major forms, so I don't want to mess things up too much. Oh, you were getting back to your link? That guy was cool, man. He's definitely the, the idea for that old, tattered, fat link. Is uh, <laughs> it's a cool idea, man. It's, it's definitely worth continuing and finishing. Old Man Link. That was a good idea. Are you you're planning on taking him all the way through the full real time gambit? So this was um was not making enough shape change on the silhouette, so I want to make sure that that thumb is nice and powerful. So I'm always looking at the silhouette value all the way through all these little pieces. No, this guy I'm doing um, strictly for collectible and statue production. It's just some personal practice. I haven't really worked that in um, that pipeline a ton. I've done some stuff, but I haven't done a ton. So I figured, what the heck, might as well... Um, might as well try out that pipeline. It's also really good um, asymmetrical anatomy practice. Jadeep, what's up, man? No, there's some wow, all kinds of India people here today. What time is it over in India? Is that that's what I'm curious about? Dan, fam's good. Company's going well. As if you don't know, uh. Dan Rorty, he's a really amazing uh, character artist. I definitely would uh, give him a peek. Mr. Mr. The Man Dan Rorty. Let's see if we can get some, just some hints going on over here. 3 p.m. in Germany, okay. 3 p.m. You'll know it's, it's 6 a.m. here in California. By the way, Dan, what are you doing up? <laughs> Is this the only time that you get to work on personal work, too? <laughs> uh, end of December, man. End of December, or uh, leveling up our Bengston party by one. Very happy to uh, be adding an addition to the family. You know, one of these days, Dan will have to do another, um, another dually. Brazil, 10 a.m. Oh, yeah, you're, 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 you're closer to us. You're closer to California. On the, on the, uh, what is that, longitude? Or I always forget latitude. <laughs> Why am I awake right now? So I can come and hang out and do some work. Hang out with you guys. 
it's super important to still make time for personal work when you're um, working professionally. Yeah, man. <laughs> Speak of the devil. All right, brother. Take it easy, man. All right. And we're not really going to see all this stuff um, in here. Trying to find time here as well. It's it's tough, man. It's It's really tough, but... You gotta continue that tenacity, you know? Be tenacious. D. Anyways, we're not gonna see this stuff down here, um, but I like at least blocking in the, um, the right details and some of the places that you're not gonna see because it helps feed all of your other forms. You know, if it's really tough to to try to get all of your forms correct if you know one particular part is just completely off. It's tough to squint like that. So I found that it really helps you to just to just block in some of the forms and stuff that that you may not see, just to help feed the other forms that you do see. <laughs> TGK. Uh, no, I'm not going to be be providing this uh, model for print. Um, I don't own the IP, and um, that would that would be uh, quite frowned upon if, if I did. So, um, because I don't own this IP, this is all just strictly strictly personal work. Um, if I do print it, you know, I can never sell it. It's just one of those things where you got to respect the IP and be very very careful. So. Again, if you're if you're working on um, fan artwork, you always got to be super super careful about what you do with it, because technically it's not yours. The law is always a little bit weird around all of that. Have you used a 3D printing hollow assist thing? Um, I have not. I have not. Uh, Andre says, personal trigger, even though I'm trying to get in some studio, in this case, personal work would fit for this purpose. Oh, yeah, personal work is perfect for for um, portfolio work. So that's what it is. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, but... You know, back to back to the whole fan art thing. Um, you know, whether it's fan art or you're using somebody else's uh, concept. You know, another artist that may or may not be involved in a game or whatever the IP is for. Um, you always, always give credit. You can never give too much credit, and it's always safe to give the credit than to not give the credit. So I always try to. Uh, Every time I'm working on something publicly, I always try to make sure that that stuff is covered. Um, so shout out to uh, Santa Monica, Sony Santa Monica and their concept art team and all the hard work all those guys and gals do over there, making an amazing game. It's really cool to, uh, to, p to be able to uh, geek out to some of their artwork. <laughs> First steps into ZBrush was miniatures for D&D. Oh, I love miniatures. That's actually how I got my artistic start. Not professionally, but that's that's what got me like deep into the uh the bowels of 3D art. I used to sit and paint 
uh, Warhammer 40,000 miniatures every weekend for like years. Tractor, what's up? You even lift, bro? Do you even ZBrush? Bro, you know how much I lift with this with this pen? Bro, look at these hands. These hands, bro. They're just like, ugh. <laughs> Let's even this out a little bit. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, the repeater gun was fun. Was uh, was fun to do. <laughs> do you even lift? Again, I'm trying to um, always always looking at the silhouette every time every rotation i'm always looking at that silhouette making sure things are interesting and looking correct i don't like that flare out So, um, and if anybody who's watching, who made, who actually made it to the summit, the Zebra Summit this year? Can you guys make it? You got a chance to meet, um, meet a lot of people this year. It was really awesome. It's really cool meeting new artists and hanging out with old family. Andre, um, Andre's asking if I'm going to be doing uh, retopology on, on this guy. Um, for this particular project, no. I'm, I'm, this is strictly just for practice for um, statue and collectible pipeline. So that's, that's why he's posed. That's why um, I'm spending so much time on a lot, a lot of these posed details. Is um, strictly for the, the statue and collectible pipeline for printing um so the nice thing about it is i don't have to worry about uvs i i won't have to worry about textures i don't have to worry about retopology none of that stuff uh the bad news is i have to re have to sculpt everything in asymmetry <laughs> not the end of the world but Try to get this palm in a little bit better shape here. Maybe we can accentuate. Reach apology. What is reach apology? That's okay, man. All all those questions are welcome. So when you are working in uh, like a video game pipeline, um, there's only a certain amount of polys that is workable for um, the actual engine. So your your model can only be a certain amount of uh, polygons. So in this particular one, we're like even just his arm is four hundred and fifty thousand uh, polygons. Your whole character, let's say in AAA pipeline, like a hero character is like hundred thousand polys, hundred thousand triangles. So um, you have to drastically, drastically reduce the amount of polygons that are on your model. So a lot of times, let's see if I can actually grab something that doesn't have. So let's say, let's say, look at these edge flows in here, right? This is really, really ugly and it's not fit for any type of animation or anything I like got. This is, this is actually a Dynamesh style. So what retopology does is it serves as two main things. One, it's for reducing the amount of polys um, and then reprojecting all of this fine detail onto the low poly with normal maps. Um, 
and the other is to just uh, clean up edge flow. So it's really specific for, um, you know, either movie or mostly game design stuff uh, or game video game pipeline. <laughs> you only watched it online. That's okay. You got to watch it. That was the important. That was the important part. Um, how long have I been working on this? Is uh, another question. Uh, I've probably been. I think I'm around. I'm I'm less than forty hours on this. Probably thirty five, maybe thirty, something like that. It's tough to tell. I'm, I've only been um, working on this on this particular stream. Uh, so I work for about two hours at a time, but I usually talk for forty five minutes worth to an hour. So I'd say each stream is probably only about an hour's worth of work. And I think I've had, I don't know, maybe 20 to 30 streams, I guess. So it's tough, it's tough to say exactly, but um, it shouldn't take too long to get to this point. When you um, start getting pretty comfortable with anatomy. Um, if you look at him, he's really mostly just primary and secondary forms. They're starting to get a little bit of smaller secondary forms in some of these more refined areas. But for the most part, I mean, it's just mostly primary and secondary forms. It's still, it's still very much, in a, for me, a blockout stage. You guys want to see his head? I haven't shown the head in a while. Saban? So there's still a lot of rough areas. Like you see, his teeth aren't even done. Like there's there's a lot of roughness kind of going out in there. Not a whole lot of finishing details yet. So of course I'm used to doing a lot of poor work for high-end realistic 3D. Uh, I mean uh, game game res, but I'm not going to get that kind of detail from this guy on a on a print. You know, it depends on how large I print him, but, you know, all the same detail that I would put in for a game res, I probably wouldn't go as far on this guy because <clears throat> the print may not even uh, carry those details. So that's why I'm, I'm focusing a lot on nailing secondary forms. Uh, because that will be my detail for print. Little things like this, or paying attention to how the the ligament runs over the knuckle. Just pull that out. Those little details become really important. What's up, Pancho? Um, do you still read topologize inside of ZBrush or to get better detail, or is it all Dynamesh? Um, it's a little bit of both. So I use I use Dynamesh when I'm I'm just starting to kind of block out the major forms, and I really need to um, have flexibility when it comes to the overall form. Once I have the overall form down, like this, like this hand, um, this is no longer Dynamesh. So once I get the overall form, then I retopologize, or so I dupe it, um, Z remesh it, and then add a bunch of subdivisions, and then reproject it to that previous uh, Dynamesh. Because now I can go up and down through my subdivisions. Um, of the subdivided model so that I can add details uh, in the higher subdivision levels and be able to go back down in subdivisions to be able to uh, change form uh, really easily. The problem with 
uh, the limitation of using the subdivisions is that um, if I want to like add another finger or something here, I'm really kind of stuck to what this topology is. And I can't really, um, I don't have the freedom to add a bunch of really large changes. Francisco from the Dominican Republic. What's up, buddy? Um, so once I have the major form down, then, um, then I'll Z remesh and, um, add a bunch of subdivisions so that I can really start getting into some nitty gritty detail. Um, any idea on how to work, do modern hair cards? Well, honestly, what I would do is, uh, I would look up Adam Scut, and there's another, um, class at, uh, CGMA that I, that I, that I would look up. Highly, highly recommend. It's, here, here's the thing with, with hair. Hair is very difficult, even for the people that are good at it. It's just not that easy. So what I suggest is taking a course or taking a class or something similar to that to really get your head around the ideas that uh, that happen and why you need to do certain things and the benefits and those types of things because in order to, to gain that knowledge on your own would probably take a ton of time looking back at it you probably would think to get to that to get to the level uh, or professional level of being able to do nice hair the time it takes to figure it out yourself um, I think is a lot more than if you would spend the time to take a class and start there Yes, Adam Scott or CGMA. Um, the other thing you can do is look up... Uh... Oh, man, I forgot. I forgot who it was. Oh, let me think about that for a second. Let me think for a second. It's still early. Make my brain work. <laughs> Yeah, man, no problem. Level 80, I think, is the like the the website that does interviews with artists. Is it level 80? They have a lot of um, a lot of tutorials and stuff that people do. Oh cool, man, yeah. If you want to, um, if you want to send it to me, um, feel free to send it to me on on Facebook or something. I don't really have time to check it out at the moment. But if you would like to send it to me, um, go for it. I'll try to take a look at it. Eighty level, yes. Thank you, Easyborn. Yes, um, they have some really. They have some really good um, tutorials. I mean, they're just kind of quick tutorials. They give you kind of a, a basic idea, um, point you in a, in a good direction. There you go. Nice. Yeah, thanks. So Driftwood, um, yeah. If you um, all all of the videos for this guy are available on my uh, author page on ZBrushLive.com. So if you go to ZBrushLive.com, 
um, and then find me uh, my page. All of the to all, all of these videos are available there from the very beginning. And while I'm at it, if you guys are interested in learning more about how to sculpt hands, guess what? I have a how to sculpt hands and ZBrush tutorial that you can find on Gumroad or Cube Brush. Uh, if you want, if if you go to my web, I think that's my website, Bankston Designs. Yeah, if you go to my website right there, it's on the front page. If you want to, um, if you're interested in uh, how to sculpt hands, ZBrush. Um, which program do you use to create uh, most of the stuff associated with the character? <clears throat> if a character has a lot of hard surface stuff, which program would you choose? It's really up to you and what you're most comfortable with. Um, I personally do a lot of my stuff, whether it's organic or hard surface, in ZBrush. That's about it's because I've spent so much time in ZBrush by now that I'm I'm more comfortable here in ZBrush. I've gotten really good um, and used to <laughs> hand master, yeah. Um, I've gotten really um, comfortable with the uh, Z modeler here in in ZBrush, so I do. I actually do a lot of my hard surface stuff here too. What course would you suggest us to do for retopology? Um, honestly, I I. I wouldn't even do a course on retopology. What I would do is just go on YouTube and and look up how how do I do retopologizing. Um, there's plenty of free stuff on on YouTube, and it'll give you a sense of what the whole gist of it is, and then you can just kind of go from there. It's probably the best. All right, so I'm looking at all of my all of my silhouettes here as I'm rotating around, just checking all. Just making sure I have nice curves and nice forms uh, along every single silhouette as I'm moving around. I'm just checking, checking here, checking here, always checking there. What's up, side? How you doing, buddy? I feel like this is still a little bit flat through here. This is a little bit weird through here. So if I'm going, if I'm looking at it like this, this line right here is not straight across. Even if I put my my thumb down all the way, it's still got somewhat of a an angle to it and not straight across like this so I'm thinking is that that's maybe why his thumb looks dislocated so I wonder let's go down to subdivision level one let's just try something real quick actually you know what let's try this on a different layer I'm gonna try to fix the angle of this thumb real quick uh, we're going to call this D2. We're going to add another layer. We're going to call this Thumb. Yo, Jarl Zoro. How you doing, buddy? So now we're going to go down to subdivision level 1. And this is a really good reason why I use um, subdivisions at this level. Um... Because it's really easy to go all the way down to the lowest subdivision level. Uh, 
and then just make some big structural changes. That's a little bit better. I can even bring it up just a little bit further. Uh, I was at the ZBrush Summit. So yes, I did watch it. That actually feels better. So now when I go back up in subdivisions, it keeps all of that... keeps all that detail. That's the beautiful thing. Let's go back down again real quick and make some more structural adjustments here now. We'll widen out the palm a little bit. That feels much better. What's up, Daniel? How you doing, man? How are you, sir? That feels much better. It doesn't look like his thumb is dislocated. Yeah, I saw, uh, yeah, Gakko's got a Discord now. So now let's look at before and after. Before, after. Which method do I use to make the ropes? Um, I just have a curve brush that it has the rope on it. So just create a curve with the rope brush. I think that rope brush is actually from... Let's actually see where it's from. Uh, let's go to brush real quick. Let's go to my custom brushes. I actually think I have it in... Hard surface. Here it is. This is the rope brush that I use. From Bad King. There we go. So basically it's just a curved brush that has that on it. Um, and then you wrap it around a particular object and then just move it. Super, super quick and easy. Uh, Microdraw says, can I get hired uh, once I become very good with ZBrush without a degree? Um, I think you have to have, you have to have, you have to have awesome art. That's, that's the, that's the ticket. You don't necessarily need an agree, a degree if you're local. Um, if you're trying to go abroad, um, then governments really like for you to have a degree. But um, when you are talking about just the studio, they don't, they don't really care if you have a degree or not. It's really about can you make amazing art and can you make amazing art for them? <laughs> Does your art style fit into what they're looking for? That's really what it's about. What's a new thing I learned from ZBrush Summit? Oh, how do I narrow that down? I always learn a lot from watching Michael Pavlovich. He did some really awesome stuff. I think one of the, the things that stood out to me the most was when um, he was talking about using nano mesh single polys for rivets. And you just place those polys wherever you want the rivets. And then in Nano Mesh, you can actually go and switch those rivets out dynamically, um, and then they'll automatically change wherever those um, wherever those nano planes are. Like, dude, that is genius! Freaking genius! Uh, I thought there was some kind of deformer for the ropes of the base mesh. Uh, no, for this one, I just used the um, the curve. 
the curve brush. Um, for this guy, I haven't used any alphas. This is all hand sculpting for the moment. Once I get into um, when I feel more comfortable with where the secondary forms are, then I'll start um, adding some detail in the uh, with with alphas. So far, it's all everything here has been hand sculpted. All this is hand sculpted. All right. <laughs> yeah, Pavlovich, man, that guy's a that guy's a monster. <laughs> yeah, Mike was great for um, uh, Sunday morning. I think it was Sunday morning. Yeah, he was on. Thanks, man. Yeah, he is uh, my um, love the Rombodius. Yeah, oh, Gail, what's up, buddy? Rombodius? Uh, are you talking about the Romboid? Yeah, Pav's Pav's mind goes like a thousand miles an hour. How you doing, Gail? Yeah, the, I, I I think I like th his back the most so far out of all this. It's for me it's a it's successful mix between um massive muscle mass and um combined with uh uh like fat pockets and folds. Skin folds. For me, it's been my... That's my most successful back in that aspect. Fighting with Retapo. Ah, Retapo hell. Yay, Retapo hell. Let's see if I can get... I'll just start working on a little bit more forms <clears throat> in the... Um, in the bicep area here now. <laughs> yeah, Yarl. You know me, I hate feet. But yeah, I mean, uh... <laughs> How big is the file size for this guy? It's actually not that bad. Um, let me see. I think he's maybe 50 megs right now. I mean, if you look at him, he's only 29 subtools at 10 million polys. So that's nowhere near some of the things that I that I've um Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, Mort. We were talking about Pav how he likes to have uh smaller smaller sizes. Okay. This all needs to come in a little bit here. It's a little bit weird. And maybe we'll pull the forearm muscles out a little bit. It's getting see how it's super flat right there. Hey, what's up, Cuckoos? Thanks, man. I feel like it's a little too rounded here. So I'm going to pull this guy in just a touch. And it's really like, you know, like sometimes you think that, you know, you may just be going overboard with being like super, super um, anal about every single form. But it gets so important. So there's a, there's a, a certain quality that the eye sees. 
that you don't necessarily see yourself, right? When you look at something, um, you're like, oh, cool, there's, there's little details and stuff, and oh, that's cool. But what you're, what you don't actively notice, your eye still sees, right? So that's that's like the whole uncanny valley um, issue, where you're like, I, you know, something's off about it. You get that feeling where you're like, Mm, I don't know, man. There's something, something, something's wrong, right? So that's that's you. That's your um, kind of your second sight, I guess you could say, or your inactive sight, whatever you want to call it. You know, some artists will be able to tell you what it is because they're they've been trained to look for those things, right? They know the knowledge and, and all that fun stuff of, of why something doesn't feel right. But when you're actively creating a piece, you you want to make sure that it it looks cool. Like when you look at it, you see the things, the specific things that you see are really cool, but also your peripheral view feels right right and when you pay attention to all those little nooks and crannies and shapes and stuff that's addressing that kind of secondary site where like or the feeling of it and that's where when you get those two combined together where you look at something and it just kind of feels right and like the details that you notice are cool that's when you have something that's super 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 successful um, and that's why it's really important to be able to get all of the forms correct is because it's that kind of secondary sight that, that kind of gets that awesome feeling of that feelings that things just feel right. You know, there's a lot of feelings in that statement. I like to think of it as um, when you have a viewer, you got to think about what that viewer, how that viewer is looking at your thing, looking at your piece, right? There's their primary sight, which is, oh, it's got ropes, and oh, he's got holding his column. Oh, okay. Oh, the, the head looks really cool. Look at all that detail in there, you know? But they don't necessarily pay attention to, oh, the pectoral muscle is weird for that for that uh, position, you know, it's really their um, peripheral vision is, is what I like to call it. Um, that looks at if it feels right or not. So having, addressing the viewer's primary vision by giving interesting specific things to look at, but also making sure that their peripheral vision, um, is addressed. That things feel right. Things feel correct. Does that make sense? I was just going on off a huge tangent here. <laughs> uh, which brush do I use to... See, I missed a little bit here. I was going on a tangent. I missed it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, prints on your brain. Yep. Uh, which brush do I use to detail the skin? I use right now. It's all been just by hand, so I'm using just damn standard and clay buildup. <laughs> Kale. <laughs> That's your sculpt, bro. <laughs> Um, I, I started this as, um, I actually used Bad King's, um, creature body parts to start just to get basic proportions down. And then I just mutilated that and, um, just move things around. So 
So I no, but I did not use these spheres. All right, so some of the things that I'm looking at for the torso now, so as I'm kind of moving down here, um, also don't, you know, don't be afraid that if you're like working on this particular thing and like your eye sees something, like don't be afraid to go fix that thing because you may forget it later. So what I'm thinking, you know, what, moving down here and kind of working on some of this, there's some things about this area in particular, like the serratus muscles here. Serratus, yeah, sartorius is in the leg. Serratus muscles here. Like, this form right here is really bugging me now. Look at that. That's, oh, ugh. It may work on this side because he's, like, compressed. So, um, fat pockets can, will, will build up through here as well. So, I don't mind this so much. But because he's stretched out here. I feel like this needs to come in a little bit, or if it is a fat pocket, I need to sell that. Right now, it's kind of like in between. Uh, one, what pen tablet am I using? I use an Intuos 5. I have made my entire career on this Intuos 5. So I'm going to go down in subdivisions here. Let's see if I can just... I want to get some plane change through here, too. So if I'm looking here, there's... there's it's really flat through that pectoral muscle and you know if that's a there's a fat pocket here then I need to sell that but right now it's kind of hovering in between a fat pocket and muscle form so it's feeling a little bit weird you see that now so the thing about <coughs> So the question is, do you bring the peck out, like you're saying, or do you push this in? So you have to think about what the what the peck does in this particular position, right? So if he pulls his arm back like this, you're not going to have a lot of, like, you'll still have some mass here, but it's being stretched back. So there's not it, there's less mass here than it will be on the right peck, right? So what I'm thinking is it's probably better to make this f this form and whatever this form is going to be have a little bit more differentiation in between. So I really want to get that pulling sensation um, of the pec. So I want to make sure that I don't... I actually may want to just straighten that out a little bit. Like this. So we get right, these really like nice... Whooshed this line what's really cool is like if you pull back right like this right you get that really tight piece like right underneath your where your pectoral comes into your deltoid you get that really like at the corner of your deltoid pec and bicep you have like this really cool little pocket <laughs> yeah just pick up just pick up a couch in front of a mirror <laughs> so yeah there's like this little cool pocket right in here See if I can get it without messing this up too much. So the the peck is actually going to come up. Nope, that's wrong. I think what I need to do is I just need to hide this guy. Let's hide that guy. There we go. So I need to know what's what's going on up here. It's even here, like these deltoids, like totally, totally whack. So let's do this. Let's work on the anatomy of uh, and the structure of what's happening here, and that'll help us define what's going on here. I think what we can do is also turn these dudes off. There we go. 
So what I thought was actually there actually should be up here. So it's it's as the deltoid is coming over, the bicep is coming in here. And the pec is coming down like this. Alright, so we got this is coming in here. So bicep is coming in through here like this. Deltoid is being pulled over. All right, so here's the connection. So the difference between the pec and the deltoid here, like this, right? Because you got the clavicle, you got the clavicle coming up this way, right? Heading over, and then you have the deltoid that connects on the inside of the clavicle here. In this particular case, it's getting pulled this way. Alright, so we got a major form change between the deltoid and the pectoral. Like this. Yes, this guy is, is fairly huge. So that was one of the reasons why I, I put the deer in to be able to give to give scale. Helps with the scale. Makes them look bigger. You don't see that. That see that's your that's your peripheral vision saying, oh, that dude looks huge. Well, he looks huge because a smaller deer is in there. It's playing with your mind, man. Okay. So we got deltoid connected with the clavicle there. We got A crash. I have not saved yet today. Just take a moment. Take a breath. Find your zen. Find your happy place. And hope and pray to the ZBrush Pixelogic Gods that it saves on crash. Like that. Save on crash, baby. Save on crash. ABBK, baby. I'll always be blaming Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Grab my recovered Z tool. There we go. We're good. Right where we left off. Needs a lot more work because that is not okay. Um, let's save it first, though. Okay. Now we're good. Okay, that's a little bit better. The transition needs to be subtle, but still able to see it. So let's bring this out just a little bit. Okay, so now we can kind of 
get that just that now that we have the locations in the um the muscles mapped in a little bit better now we can make informed decisions of where that that little the little nook comes in there Let's see how that's looking. Let's go turn those guys back on. Still looks a little bit weird. Let's we'll see what it looks like with the um, with this dude on. <laughs> yeah, change it to save effect so you don't forget to save. Maybe this needs this is a little too rounded. This should be kind of a little bit more flat through here. Gonna round that edge out a little bit. Try to get a little bit of more form change through here. And let's see what it looks like if this is a little bit more of a fat pocket. So what if we specifically make this you can see how these this these lines just kinda end right here? That shouldn't happen. This should kinda continue through here. Maybe we got a little break there. Best software to re record sculpting? You can actually do it in here in ZBrush. I'm going to break this up a little bit. OBS is another good one. Um, Camtasia. There's a lot of people use Camtasia. So now when we um when we purposefully make this into more of a fat pocket it starts looking a little bit more natural when you have you know it's not muscle What's up Danny Zebrash? How you doing, man? How are you? Hey buddy. See how we break up that um, this silhouette. Maybe I'll try some more inflate here. This doesn't quite feel right yet. When we purposefully make it look like a fat pocket, it feels a little bit better and it's a little bit more forgiving for this area. I feel like this actually needs to come out a little bit. It goes a little too deep in there.
It's kind of a little tricky area in here. Let's get the nice form break there. Oh yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I think this form, though, this form should be coming up here like this. And think about where that's connecting. See if that's a little bit more correct in here. Another thing to keep in mind is, you know, as he's pulling his arm up like this, like, you know, you'll still have a little bit of that fat pocket here, but it, it will be kind of more, it'll break this silhouette, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be like this, you know, it's not going to be sticking out so much. It'll be more like hanging gravity kind of thing, right? So it may be cool to just pull this out a little bit and really show that, like, kind of gravity happening. That's kind of cool. Whereas this one over here is really just about kind of crunching all this down. So you're going to get a lot of a lot more large rounded excuse me a lot more of a large rounded uh, shape or over here you may get more of a droop see how that's feeling Let's just, just pull this guy down just a little bit. And then let's make sure that this is nice and rounded. What's up, Borkan? Um, no, this is just fan art. This is uh, strictly for my own fun. And, a, and an ode to an amazing game. Pull this in just a little bit here. What's up, Madri? How you doing? <laughs> Do we even lift, troll? God. See if we can connect, continue some of these lines through here. Maybe we'll get some, a little bit of form plane breaks coming through here. 
maybe not necessarily just those cut-ins like this. We really want to have some subtle actual form breaks through here. What would be a decent amount of polys for a character like this for a game engine? Um, I would say, I would say probably uh, for current current gen. Um, well, he doesn't have much hair. Um, I'd say probably about between eighty-five and a hundred thousand triangles. Probably pretty good. What's up, Wilfred? How you doing? I'm just going to try to start breaking up a little bit of this through here and getting some nice kind of visual information. Now that we have kind of the majority of the muscles um, in. It's time to start adding a little bit more kind of visual breakup and interest in the uh, actual f surface here. Uh, best back. Um, why am I not modeling this in T-Pose? Is because uh, this particular project is going to be for collectible and print. Um, not for game engine for this particular project most of my work I do is is for um, for video game work this particular one is is for uh, a different pipeline so I'm, I'm not worried about um, it being posed out and um, and implemented into a game engine Uh, we're counting in triangles instead of polys. Same thing, really. It's either poly, or it's either triangles or quads. And ultimately, um, for game engine, when you say, when you say, hundred thousand polys, um, it's going to end up being tries. That's a hundred thousand total polys. So in the game engine, it triangles everything. So um, it usually equates to triangles. Let's look at this at the right angle here. There we go. Let me start just adding in some... A little more form detail through here. And again, these muscles all depend on what's being uh, strained in what position, right? So, is this guy using his tricep muscle very much? Probably not. Maybe a little bit for stability, but he's not like, you know, he's not like. Flexing like that, so you know the it's important to to pose your muscles in whether they're being flexed or if they are. You know, what level of pressure are they being used at? Yeah, no problem, yeah. Um Yeah, so the the term polys is really just about you know whether what your what your final count is gonna be, whether it's triangles or not.
Uh, what are the benefits of triangles versus quads? Um, it's kind of a deep question. Very personal, too. God. <laughs> Just kidding. Triangles is, if you're going to be putting it into the game, triangles is ultimately what your final output is going to be. So even if you have quads, the game engine is going to subdivide that quad into two triangles. <clears throat> so it really has to do with uh, deformation. Um, if things have nice quads, then for the most part, you can be assured that um, the deformation through those areas uh, will be fairly nice. If you have a lot of poles and or n-gons or um, triangles, things may not kind of flex in the right ways. Uh, the general rule of thumb is just to uh, model in quads as most as as most as you can as mostly as mostest osmosis uh, modeling quads when you can is the general rule And start adding just a little bit of um, a little bit more depth to some of these valleys and get a little bit more visual information coming through here um, right now I'm working for crystal dynamics um, as a character artist and um, how did I get that job? Um, right place at the right time with the right skills. <laughs> That's really what it is. Um, really, the, the 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 best advice I can give is just make awesome artwork, and the rest falls into place. If you make really nice artwork, um, eventually things happen. Be consistent and um, meet a lot of people in the industry. Be active. Yeah, no problem, man. All right, let's plan where is, so I think this is going to cut in here a little bit. Um, how long should you spend on a portfolio piece? Uh, it, it varies so much. Each product project is so different. Um, I think there's two different types of, uh, work that you do when it's personal work. It's either learning or, uh, polishing for a portfolio piece. And I think it's really important to differentiate between the two. Um, <laughs> Martin, what's up, dude? Frothy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's important to to differentiate between whether you're making a finished portfolio piece or the piece that you're working on is particularly just for learning. Um, a lot of times those get crossed, and um, 
kind of suffer in some aspects. So, it really depends. So, you know, the que so the question is, how long do you spend on a piece? If it's if you're trying to learn something, um, take as much time as you need to learn what you feel that piece is going to teach you. Um, if if you feel like it's just a practice piece and you're just kind of going about your day and and trying some things out and and practicing. If you feel like you, you're not getting any more out of that, then move on to the next piece, you know? Um, if it's more for... If you're striving for the portfolio piece, until it's done, you know? Until until you look at it and you say, um, I'm happy, or at least happy enough, without having to start a whole new project, <laughs> never really happy with it but um if it represents your current skill set you know what i mean so it, it's tough to say how long a piece takes i guess that's the that's the official answer to that one what's up Noah? how you doing Martin, did I did I hear I had to leave the uh, summit early? Did I hear that you won? You won uh, the the sculpt off. You crazy bastard, you! If so, that's awesome, dude. Congratulations, man. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. So I went off on a tangent there for a second. Let's see if I get back if there's any questions. Uh, what softwares are mostly used in the game industry? ZBrush, um, either Maya or Max, Substance Painter, Marvelous. Yeah, but uh, Babu, it there's there's no you should spend at least this amount of time on a, on a piece. It's really about like I wouldn't even worry about that. If you can if you can bust out a practice piece in twenty minutes, that's all you need. You know, um, if it takes you a year to do a full a full piece, that's how long it takes. I wouldn't worry too much on the time. It's kind of whatever f feels right to you, you know? <laughs> From path, it's the speed of light, yeah. Exactly. We get some kind of tension kind of going up this way. It'll really help with that action line. And it also really helps. So the more the more kind of tension and stuff moving up here will really help the flow of this presentation, the presentation of this character, right? You know, have a really nice juxtaposition between action of him holding this big ass piece of thing and the squashing of this side to help kind of like off balance that so the more i can kind of sell this stretching on this side and squashing on this side the better presentation it's going to feel the better overall feeling it's going to have so i really want to make sure that that stuff is happening how did you find it when first applying and trying to get into the game industry? <laughs> Frustrating. Um, I probably got to... I, I actually kept track of uh, 
how many places I applied to throughout the years. Um, I think I was up to about probably about 80, 80 no's before I got my yes uh, at a major studio. Let's put it that way. There's a there's a lot of no's, man. There's a it it's you got to look at no's as um, not right nows and fire for get better, get keep getting better. Let me start refining some of these details in the back here. It was about it was about eighty. It takes time, man. It, it it takes a lot of time, and it all depends on how fast how fast you're getting better. You know, if you if you have the luxury of of spending time practicing and and getting better, do it. Do it. I don't like this happening here. Don't be afraid to go back. If something doesn't feel right, don't afraid don't be afraid to go back. And I don't really like this going on here either. There we go. So I think that some of this so some of the more details back here, I want to mix between cutting in in some places and just yeah, that's right. And just giving a little bit more form to other places. You know? Yep, no shouldn't... I mean, no's should affect you, but it shouldn't stop you. No's should definitely affect you. No's should be like... Not yet. Work harder. Do the things. Make better. <laughs> What's up, Vuk? Um the streams that I've been doing lately are all um on the on Pixel Logic. So if you go to ZBrushLive.com, um you can find all of my streams on there from from the Pixel Logic channel here. Um and you can find all kinds of other amazing artists on there that also stream on um zbrush on on the pixie logic what's up ricardo how you doing man oh yeah man it was good meeting you too appreciate it man that's yeah i always always tell people man if if you can get to the zbrush summit uh it's so worth it so good Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Now that you're there, what do you know that we don't? <laughs> now, what what do I know that that you don't? Um, all right, here's 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 the th I, I think one of the biggest advices I can give on, um, you know, being in the in the professional industry versus getting in and what to work on. I think the most one of the most important skills that you can have is being able to problem solve. Like it's so important to be able to look at a particular project and be able to on your own solve the problems that are going to come about from that project. 
have to be able to work independently. Um, and problem solving is probably one of the hugest things. Being um, self-sufficient. When it comes to getting things done. Think creatively, think, you know... Um, think creatively. I think that's one of the biggest things, you know. But being able to to sol be a problem solver is probably one of the, one of the biggest things, man. Like if if you're able to take something and just get it done. I mean, granted, there's always going to be times when you need to ask questions and stuff. That's totally fine. But you can't do that for every single question that you have. And every single project that you work on, every single let's say let's say you're given a character to work on, you've never done that character before. So of course there's going to be things that come up during the production of that character that you've never had to deal with. So you have to you know you you have to be able to solve problems creatively, uh, and quickly and on your own. For me, that was probably one of the biggest things. Uh, to learn or to realize because every project is different Every single character is different. It's going to present different problems. Um, you can see it right here. For level of subdivision, I'm on three of five, three of four, three of four, yeah. All right, so this is the trapezius that's coming down here. When I usually when I'm um, trying to build up form in the muscle, what I try to do is I try to go in the in line with the way that the muscle striations are going. So if you know the trapezius, it goes like this, and then. Somewhere around here, the scapula, the spine of the scapula, it starts going horizontal and then does this. So it does like this 180 degree um, turn from going almost straight down all the way to sideways and then curving up and going this way. What I, what I usually get from that is some nice kind of happy accidents when it comes to the striations of the muscles and kind of just getting some of those smaller subtle details and if you get that going in line with the muscle striations you tend to get some some nice things happening some, some of that just really subtle those subtle forms Uh, what are the most common problems you had to face doing this particular project? Is that what you're talking about? Need a little bit of form definition through here. Maybe not so straight. I think what this needs to do is it needs to come. I 
feel like that's a little much. Kind of liked it before all that. So again, thinking about um, what the muscles are actually doing, right? So right now, to put your shoulder up like this, like to bring your arm back, that's what this, that's what the traps are for back here, right? It con contracts the, um, pulls the scapula back so you can pull your shoulder back like that. So on this side, we're going to get a lot of squash. We're going to get a lot of compression. On this one, his arm is forward, right? So we're not going to get as much of that compression on this side of the trapezius um, as we are on this side. So there's a nice contradiction between squash and stretch again, right? So squash, stretch. Uh, regarding building a portfolio for game studios, do you suggest work in progresses? Along f uh, alongside full retopo pieces in a sketch page, or only the full finished posed retopos. If you, um, I would say, if you need to show something that's um, in line with where you are currently in talent. If that is showing a work in progress, then I think that that's okay. As long as you label it a work in progress uh, for your portfolio. But for the most part, I would only show finished pieces. Uh, because what you want to do is you want to be able to give the person that's looking at your portfolio very quick answers um, without taking too much of his time, his or her time, right? So, like, they want to be able to look at your stuff and go, A, he's got a finished piece. B, it looks awesome. Okay, it looks awesome. Cool. Now I want to look at all of his technical work, right? Is it finished and is it awesome? I think those are, like, the two big questions because if they're going to hire you, they want to know that you can finish something and they want to know that you can make awesome finished things, right? So you answer those two things first and foremost. Then if they're interested, they can go through the technical stuff, right? And then be like, oh, this thing is awesome, and it's finished. Like that in and of itself is is a huge <laughs> milestone, especially for game uh, game pipeline because it just like, oh my god, it's so involved. Um, so having those two things, I think, are really really important. If you have a bunch of work in progress stuff, it doesn't show that you can finish the th the things. You know what I mean? So I always try to say if it's su have finished stuff, don't have work in progress stuffs. Don't have work in progress stuff unless you need to show the difference between what the quality of what you had finished and where you are now in a current work in progress. But I would never leave work in progress stuff up on a portfolio. I would always try to finish it. The only time I would actually put it up is if um, it represents a, a large leap in my own personal uh, quality. Right now, like let's say for instance my portfolio. If you go to my portfolio site, um, there's a couple work in progresses up there. The reason why I have them up there is because I feel like they represent a, a large shift in my own personal quality of work, and I haven't had time to finish them. So I think the positives are enough for being for showing those work in progresses that um, it serves the purpose. Um, I think I have like a 28 inch monitor. Yeah, this, this um, if you look up here, it's only 29 subtools at 10 million polys. It's actually really small. Fairly light. No, I'm only I'm only working with uh, 16 gigs of RAM right now. But if you start if you start working with um, subdivision levels, it goes pretty smoothly. Because when you rotate, 
if you see everything goes to the lower subdivision level and then as I let go it comes back up to its current right so low current low current uh, Noah says I'm doing a portfolio should I do characters and hard surfaces um, as for the general question of what should I put in my portfolio there's a couple of answers that I usually give one is only put shit in your portfolio that you want to do. If you have things in your portfolio that you hate doing, guess what you're going to get hired for? <laughs> That's that stuff. You're going to get hired for the things that you have in your portfolio. So if you hate doing animation, don't have animation in your portfolio. If you hate doing... um. Hard surface? Don't have hard surface in there. The most important thing is the, that the stuff in your portfolio represents you and your passion. Um, if you love hard surface, do hard surface. Like, you should... Whenever somebody looks at your portfolio, they should, in an instant, go, oh, this guy is a blah, blah, blah artist. You know? If you're kind of all over the place, then the perception is that you're kind of all over the place as, as an artist. You're like, well, he, he, does, he does some hard surface. He does some organic. He does some... Which isn't necessarily bad. But if you're specifically trying to go for something in particular... Um, you know, you may, you may lead them in wrong directions. I don't really like that form change at all. I don't like that form change. Going back. Going back. Going back. Going back. By the way, um, you know, if, if you guys ask a question and I and I don't get to it or I don't see it, please feel free to to repost it. Um, there's there's a lot of times where I'm kind of either going on a rant or I'm I'm zoned out a little bit, um, and I if I miss your question, um, please just go, yeah just just repost it if you really would like uh, an answer. Sometimes I zone out a little, little bit when I'm talking about something or when I'm involved in a particular sculpting moment. Yeah, no, I don't I don't I don't think I need 32 gigs of RAM. Um I think it's kind of expensive right now for 32 gigs. 16 works just fine for me, and I I have some pretty heavy stuff that I work on. <laughs> of course, I have a um a good CPU is really where that makes up. I have a i uh i seven sixty seven hundred K. So having a good CPU helps helps with that. It's not all based on your RAM. Just trying to get. When are you planning to finish this guy? When he's done. When I feel like if I do more to him, it's going to either be detrimental to him. Or I'm so sick of working on it and I feel like the current spot is good enough. <laughs> That's probably when I'm done. That's, that'll be when I'm done. I'm just trying to round out this transition here a little bit more. It should be coming this way. Again, going with those muscle striations in the direction of the muscle really helps. 
Um, I am not going to texture this. This one's this is I, what I may do is I may do some poly paint to it, which might be kind of cool. Uh, depending on how much more time it takes me to get to a place where I'm happy with, with the sculpt. is To me, that's the most important thing for this guy, is the actual sculpt. So if I get to that point, um, and I still want to work on them, and I still want to do some, uh, you know, push them a little bit further, then I may do some poly painting on them. That may be kind of fun. I haven't done poly painting in a long time, so... <laughs> That may happen, uh, but I, I I wouldn't go through and and do like a full substance designer on this guy, mostly because uh, that's not what the pipeline is is preaching. This particular project is all about the sculpt and the pose for print. If this was a production piece, there would probably be a, a painter anyways that would take over. Zoning out. All right, what else we got? Uh, what graphic card am I using? Um, I, I have a uh, GTX 1070. Um, but that's fairly irrelevant for this. If I can get some interesting information kind of going across this span. I'm just... Trying to find, so here I am. Welcome to my inner brain. So I feel like this, this area right here is still kind of lacking a lot of this nice kind of information that's going on around it. So what I'm trying to do is I I don't know at this point what I want to do. So sometimes I just come through and just kind of sketch a little bit, you know. I'm like, okay, well, which way is the, um, you know, which. Which way is the muscle going in here? Maybe maybe we'll have like some pull on the skin coming up this way. It might be kind of cool because the skin's connecting to the, you know, there's not there's no muscle on the spine here. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe like the the skin is getting pulled up here as as it as it kind of like, so like pulls the shoulder up. Maybe it's. You know, maybe we got some things kind of going up that way. Well, maybe that's a little bit too much noise in here. So just kind of try to find some cool things just by physically what's going on. I'm thinking about the skin um, and the pull of uh, the motion of the pose coming up this way. You know, maybe, maybe get like little pieces of skin that kind of come up this way. I'm just kind of searching for a cool next level detail of what may be happening in here. And just kind of like, just play around a little bit, you know, see what works. If something's kind of cool, you know, something catches, awesome. You know, maybe, maybe we show the squashing and stretching of like this really pulling up, you know, the skin really pulling up through here like this and then showing how that just kind of like feeds down this way so it kind of gives that whole like tension pulling up through here 
and then showing that it's not tensed through here, you know? Um, you can see all the intensity and all the stuff right here. Uh, so there's my draw size, my focal shift, and my Z intensity. And the, the, uh, the brush that I'm currently using. Um, this is my light placement, and then this is the material that I'm using. So at any given time, you can always just check up there. Because I, I, I do go through my brushes quite fast. So um, if you're ever wondering what I'm using or what my intensity and stuff are, that's all the way up there. Uh, when I'm going to sculpt a overweight person, should I sculpt the skinny version first and then add the fat? Um, what I would do is I usually lay in the amount of muscle first and then add uh, the fat. Because really, it's, it's about the fat pockets and, and where they're, where they are. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really good idea to know what the muscles are doing. Before you start adding the fat layers. I mean, if, if you already know, and you can think of that in your head while you're putting down the fat layers, then you can do that. But if you're not, if you're not quite sure, then I would lay the muscles out first. I wouldn't necessarily do skinny and then... Uh, fatten them up, what I would do is I would lay the whatever the muscle structure is down first. Now maybe some of this... Maybe we'll get some of the, the skin tightening and stuff through here. It's always good to, when you're going and, and doing these types of lines and stuff, vary up your your brush um, draw size. You really, what you don't want to do is you want to you don't want to start getting the same um, brush strokes, same size brush strokes all over the place. You really want to make sure that you're varying those up. See how that's feeling. feels pretty disconnected at this point so maybe if we start pulling in some of this through here and really kind of selling that this feeds into some of these but just getting just enough kind of sell that it's important <laughs> uh no it says you're good at weapons and furniture i would say you know not don't don't necessarily do exactly what you're good at for your portfolio do do what you love doing because that's what you're going to get hired for if if you're good at doing furniture and weapons, but you really want to be a character artist, and all you have is furniture and weapons in your portfolio, guess what you're going to get hired for? Not characters. <laughs> Maybe we have some skin folds going through here. And be really careful when you're doing skin folds. Yeah, it doesn't look right. Uh yeah, I was I I've been drawing since I was a little kid. Um, 
but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to know how to draw uh, to sculpt. I think nowadays, you know, when, when I was young, we didn't have this. So, like, the easiest thing to do was to draw. So I don't I don't think that you need to know how to draw really well to be successful. I think what you need is a good way to practice. So for a lot of people, that good way to practice uh, cheap and quickly is to draw. That's where I think it really comes in helpful nowadays. Is that you know if 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 you can't necess if you can't let's say you can't afford uh you know, a laptop or something that is going to let you practice more often than you're able to spend at your desk or at your workstation. Then drawing comes in handy because you can practice. Practice your anatomy. Practice um, your design. Practice graphic design. Practice your core... Um, your core art knowledge you know what's what's repeating patterns what is uh you know the layered cake effect what's what what makes good design you know what um what are the what are the muscles in the body what are the bones in the body all that stuff you can you can you don't have to be at zebras to practice so really it's more how much time of how much practice can you get in, you know? And I think drawing is cheap and it's portable. So if it helps you, do it, man. Learn. You don't have to be good. You're not you're not doing if you're not doing illustrations, professional illustrations from pen and paper and stuff. You don't have to be good. Just use it to practice. You know? The more time you can practice, the quicker you're going to get better. More betterist. Maybe we'll have one more supporting... skin through here. Maybe that will connect the skin stuff. <laughs> right? Mo better, mo better, mo better. There you go, see? Um, Overambitious says, I kind of want to learn how to draw simple concept art because it would help me as an environment artist. Anything to help you, man. If you're an environment artist, draw trees, draw bricks, draw, you know, do rock studies, do anything that's going to be able to help you in more areas. You know, if you if you can't get to Maya or Max or whatever you end up using to do your environment art, Study. Take a freaking drawing pad out and while you're waiting for the bus, draw the bus stop. You know? Think about um think about what it takes to make the art that you need to make. What do the light posts feet look like? You know, are there different types of light posts? What's outside you know, what what's next to you and then take that and say well, wouldn't it be cool if you did this yeah I really don't like that thing hmm. 
Yeah, I don't really like this little squiggly bit in here. Let's pull that back out. If something doesn't work, don't be afraid to, to squash it and do something else. Start again. Yep, yep, there you go. Bodybuilders are a great uh, anatomy source. But don't just do bodybuilders. <laughs> Make sure that you know how to do different body types, you know? I as as a growing fledgling I did a lot of bodybuilder stuff and then next thing you know all of the things that I do are like super massive <laughs> like this guy Oh thanks I I appreciate it man Persistence and knowledge. Application of knowledge. That's what it takes. So now let so we'll we'll get a couple of lines in here and then we'll start pulling out some of the shapes in between there. So that when you have some kind of breakup. It's not just the what you dig in, it's it's the difference of the shapes and how the light plays off of it. I don't really like it very much. think it needs to be more subtle through there. Yeah, that's right. We'll do something a little bit more subtle through here. Feels a little better. Um I feel like it may be a waste of time to learn a lot of things at the same time. I think it depends. Um, there's one argument that says, well, everything's connected, so you should learn a lot of things at the same time anyways. Um, there's another that says uh, you may get overwhelmed <laughs> if you do everything at the same time and not learn en enough. It's really, I think it's it's mostly what works best for you for what you're trying to learn. Um, we're getting some compression in here a little bit through here so it might be cool to get a little bit of skin folds happening through here There we go. Let's show a little bit more compression up there. Maybe we may get some some skin folds through here. Remember to vary up the size of the shapes. Hello from Algeria. What's up, man? What's up? Hello, Algeria.
What I, so here's what I don't like. So I'm looking at this, at these two shapes, and these two, this shape and this shape are very, very similar. Uh, can you please explain how you made the rope? Sure. Um, let's do the rope real quick. Let's save first, though. Uh, it's really easy. Um, I have a I have a curve brush that's rope. Um, so what you can do is uh, badking.au.com. I think it's or badking.au. Let's look and see. So I have an actual brush. Um, hard surface. This one here. So if you look here, it's uh, badking.com.au. You can actually go and find this brush for free. So what I do is, um, so I just grab the piece that I want it around and just start drawing like this. And if I hold down shift, that's going to make this a straight line. But if I keep holding down shift and they pull off of the, um, of the subtool and then let it go, Try that again. It makes a circle for me. Super, super quick and easy. So again, holding down shift, pull off, it creates the line around whatever the object is. And then there you go. It's a curve. I can kind of move the curve however I want to. I can move this. Because the curve is going around this particular piece I can kind of move it however I want to it's really really quick and easy if you use the right tools there you go easy peasy man rope curve brush and that's exactly uh, how I did these um, but I just did them with uh, curve strap snap curve curve strap snap right there so that's how I did these belts these belts and these belts same thing with the um, with the ropes and then I just use my move tool to move move them around a little bit yep yep happy to share man happy to share So I'm looking looking at this and I'm I'm thinking okay what is what feels off about this and I think what's happening is I'm getting this line and these lines and these lines and these lines they feel pretty evenly spaced out and it's not really f forming that nice um layered cake effect by layered cake effect I mean you know let's you know why why does this feel okay because you have this large shape you have a medium shape, a medium shape, and a small shape, right? So let's say if I did, all right, subtool here, this. feels It feels even better because you're having this, the, the, right, you have the large shape here, and you have a small shape, and then you have a medium shape, and a little bit medium shape, and a small shape. So if you go and do a large shape, medium shape, small shape, that feels much better than if you have the same distances between all of these. And that's why this feels a little bit weird. And that's why this feels weird. It's because this, this form is almost exactly the same as this form. So it's always good to, to know why something doesn't feel good. So I'll get back to this one in a minute here. But that's 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 what I'm getting at why this feels a little bit weird through here, right? So like this shape here and this shape and this shape and this shape all feel similar size. Right? This shape, this shape, this shape. All similar sizes. So what how do I fix that? I just vary it up a little bit. Let's take this one out, for instance.
right? So now I've got this small shape, a medium shape, and maybe I'll do a big shape here. So maybe I'll pull this one down here. So now I got small, medium, large. Once you start doing that, things start feeling way more natural. All right, so the other side still is suffering from that, and the middle is still suffering from that, but this side feels better. It's moving in the right direction. So let's apply that same thing. So this shape, this shape, and this shape all feel a little bit too similar. So maybe I'll I'll pull this back. All right, so maybe maybe my small shape will be down here to juxtaposition this cadence. All right, so maybe maybe my small shape is here. Maybe my my big shape is here. And then maybe my medium one's up here. And it's closer to what this size is, so maybe we'll do that. So it starts feeling a little bit more natural. So now I still have to be careful because this, this shape now is similar to this shape. So you can kind of get into this like weird weirdness when you're trying to vary up these shapes. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just pull some of that out all together. So being aware of large, medium, and small shapes make, makes, makes a huge, huge difference. So this this is suffering from something similar up here. Um, this one is not going to be rigged. This will be uh, this project is strictly for uh, collectibles and statue pipeline. So large, small, medium. Maybe this comes across like this. So just being a, a, aware of of those aspects of of design and the art principles uh, makes a huge, huge difference. Let's see. See, it's not it's not feeling as weird anymore, right? Like your your peripheral vision is not quite accosted anymore. No, this one is not going to be retoppled. Re re so look here. So this shape, this shape, and this shape, pretty close, right? So this would be the larger of the three, but this shape and this shape are really, really close. So you know what? What if I just brought this one down a little bit and made that shape a little bit bigger and this one a little smaller? Look how just just by looking at that, how much more natural it starts feeling. It doesn't feel as weird anymore, right? So important. All right, so this one's bugging me. So this shape was almost exactly the same as this one. Starts looking a little weird. So I'm just going to pull that back out. And then what I'll do is... You know, maybe maybe I'll pull a, a larger one down through here, like that, and then maybe I'll pull a small one through here.
still a little bit weird. So larger. Maybe my smaller one will be down here. Can't get that angle right. I think something like that. Starts not feeling as weird anymore. Um, are you responsible for the entire sculpting process in the pipeline? Um, it all depends. It all depends on the studio, but for the most part, yes. Um, uh, a lot of studios are, you know. If you're assigned a character, like you're, you pretty much handle that character f in f the full pipeline of that particular character. See, that's definitely not as weird anymore. It's not perfect, but it's not as weird as those two exact ones are. You start practicing this this technique, um, and it really helps out with the more natural feeling, right? So you got this large shape. And then this shape and this shape, you know, small, medium, medium, large, large, small, medium, large, small, medium, large. So this feels, this is starting to feel a little bit. <clears throat> A little bit weird where like this shape and this shape and this shape feel similar. So maybe this would help if I took this guy out and made him a smaller one like that. It feels much better. So now we got small, medium, large, large. So those are the things that I think about with <clears throat> with everything. You see down here, large, medium, small. Yeah, usually you'll you'll handle everything in the character pipeline. So from block out to um high res sculpting to retopology, UVing, uh texture map setup, um texturing, baking, um all the way to final render in game, you know, putting your putting your model in the game in the engine, and making sure everything's hooked up. So from from nothing to finished asset is usually what the character artist in the game uh, pipeline is responsible for. It's a, it's a lot of work, man. It's 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 a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of technical stuff, not just not just artistic but there's a ton of technical stuff that goes along with it again small medium large just want to make sure I vary those up oh thanks can't even Appreciate it, man. Save it. All right. Um, I've definitely gone over my normal time today, so I think we're gonna we're gonna start wrapping it up here. Any other final final questions before we uh, before we take off? Okay. All right. I've answered every single question everyone has ever had. Ever. <laughs> All right. That's a fun today. Um, worked on uh, the hand, the arm a little bit. Worked on the back a bunch. Um, a little bit on the arm. Uh, on this side. And, uh, yeah, we'll continue... We will continue soon. Um, let's see when my next stream is. 
I'm actually doing three this month. Three? What? Next one will be next Saturday. Not so this not this Saturday, but the Saturday Saturday after. Same bat time, same bat channel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a deer. Bottom left. A very early, ugly, gross block out of a deer. Let's help to give him a uh, scale. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Um, hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys learned a couple things. Uh, uh, but most of all, I hope you're inspired to go make your own stuff. So do it. Get out there. Go do it. Make the cool shit. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks a lot for coming by. We had good talks. And um, I will see you next weekend. All right. Later, everybody. Oh, uh, don't forget to tune in to and follow the Pixelogic channel here on Twitch. Um, there's a lot of another, a lot of another, <laughs> a lot of other awesome, awesome artists uh, streaming. So be sure to give um, a follow to the Twitch channel, um, the Pixelogic Twitch channel. And if you'd like, you can follow my personal channel, which is right down there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Later, everybody. Peace out. Bye.